Hi, internet people. Lucifer was back this week. So if you didn't already know, Lucifer on Fox is doing three episodes in the month of January, and then it's going on hiatus for a while until May. So uh, for the first time, we're getting a full three episode arc. So tonight's episode leads into a larger plot that will tie up at the end of the month. So we haven't met the official big bad, um, but he's coming next week, and I will explain when we get further into the video. So this episode picks up right where the episode before the holiday break happened. Um, Lucifer and Chloe are together and they're talking and it looks like they're about to like kiss and then all of a sudden a flight attendant named Gianna walks in and Lucifer is like no don't mm -mm. Chloe gets upset and leaves which makes sense. Lucifer winds up telling Gianna to leave which is fine. Doesn't hook up with her totally understandable. He was trying to have a meaningful moment with Chloe. Um, so we then move to Chloe being at home and she's like super excited, or Chloe's not super excited. Hold on. Chloe's at home making breakfast for Trixie and Trixie wants to eat this like sh super sugary cereal that uh, Maze got for her and Maze is like super excited because the front page news is the guy who got killed by the Russian mob that she helped Detective Dan kicked out like she's so excited but she can't tell Chloe why she's excited um this leads to a very awkward like um Chloe's like well whoever did that is no better than the guy who did it and then Maze is upset and then um Maze winds up eating the, su the super sugary cereal with vodka in the morning which yeah, it's a great morning for her um, she's just, and then she goes to the police station and is like talking to Dan. She's like, look, look, what's on the front page? We're practically famous. And Dan is like, oh, please stop talking about this. Please don't talk about this. Like he's super stressed out because I mean, he can't do that. He's a cop. Like he's not supposed to be involved in stuff like this. And then Maze is upset because he's not like, she's not acknowledging that she's upset, but she's like, come on, like this is a big deal. Uh, yeah. Then they get a call. Chloe and Lucifer wind up at a murder scene and it's Gianna who's dead. And they're like, what? And like, she was just at Lucifer's place. So, um, they connect her to this guy who's like hosting a pool party. He had been sending her threatening texts that were supposed to be like hookup texts, whatever. Um, but they show up and Lucifer beats Chloe there and is wearing a nice pool suit. Um, like white suit, like the kind of thing you apparently wear if you're fancy and go to pool parties. I don't know. Um, but they're there and they get directed to go talk to this guy. They go talk to him. He's like, no, I didn't do anything. Da, da, da. Um, I never hooked up with her or like he wanted to hook up with her, but he hooked up with another girl instead who also knows Lucifer. Then Chloe gets a call and they're like, oh, there's been another murder. And they go to this murder and it's a, it's an, it's a guy whose name is apparently Raj. And, um, Chloe's like, oh, well, this, is he connected to you? Like you didn't sleep with him. And Lucifer was like, um, yeah, poor Raj, um, yeah. So, big reveal, uh, Lucifer and Maze, uh, Maze we already knew about, are both bi? I'm going with bi, I'm gonna say bi if I'm using the wrong term, someone correct me. Um, but they're both bi, which is awesome, uh, but he totally hooked up with someone else who also died, but that person... And he's like, but I don't, like, he has no idea why people would be killing people he's hooking up with. Um, they're trying to investigate it, and they wind up calling in all of Lucifer's exes. Well, not even exes, it's like former hookups. And, like, they keep talking about all of this stuff that Lucifer does. One talks about a pan flute and a butternut squash, and there's honey, and then something about Vaseline and a battery, and, ooh, there's a lot. There is one guy that they do have show up on camera to talk. Um, primarily it is women, but there is a guy. There is a guy that talks to Chloe. And, like, the whole time... Um, Lucifer is like commenting about it to Detective Dan and Detective Dan is like, oh my god, like it's just a lot. But then none of them, like Chloe asks if like they've ever been intimate, like emotionally, and all of these people are like, no, like it was just a hookup, like I wouldn't kill someone for Lucifer. And then, like it just keeps going on and on, like it was just a hookup, it was just sex, it wasn't, it didn't really mean anything. And you can tell Lucifer is getting upset because none of these people like genuinely care. And he's like, no one cares, like no one cares enough to murder for me, I'm fine. And then someone mentions there was this creepy girl who, <laughs> I said that's so weird, there's this like girl and one of them is like, I can't describe her but I can describe her aura and they're like, she was so creepy. Turns out her name is Suki 
and she lives in an apartment and is obsessed with Lucifer. Um, she has like a big murder board sort of situation going on and she has like little Lucifer dolls which are super cute. Um, and she's like, no, I love Lucifer, but they've never hooked up and she was totally not sexy Richard Nixon, which how the I'm not a crook would be, I don't, I don't know, but okay. To each their own. If you appreciate sexy presidents, have fun with that. Um, but Lucifer's like, she'd kill for me, but like, she figures out, she knows that the flight attendant and the other murder victim, Raj, so Gianna and Raj, are actually friends. And so they were both friends and are now dead. Um, but then they see a photo of this pilot and she's like, oh, da, da, da. they tracked down the pilot and the pilot actually thought that Chloe and Lucifer were going to kill him. And he's like, what the crap? Um, but he's like, no, you're cops. This is great. I thought you were going to kill me. Um, because there's something very intense going on. I'm going to take a mini break so I can flip to some other stuff. Maze goes to see Dr. Linda because she's upset that no one is taking her seriously. She's like, are you kidding? Like, no one cares that I did this stuff. And then Dr. Linda is trying to tell her, like, you're awesome, but like it doesn't matter if I tell you you're awesome, you have to think that you're awesome. And so it turns into Dr. Linda explaining that Maze is an awesome person, but she's like, you have to think that. Like, I can't just tell you that. You have to think you're awesome. So like, whole rest of the episode, Maze is like, I'm an amazing person, and it doesn't matter what you say, I am just amazing. Which is great, Maze is amazing, but it's just funny that like, she's validating herself by like, pointing out to people that she is amazing, based on Dr. Linda, which she also stole Dr. Linda's lunch. Just the egg. She left the salad. Um, on top of that, Mama Morningstar and Amenadiel are still meeting. And every time Mama Morningstar mentions having sex, Amenadiel's face is always like, oh, please stop. Um, but she wants him to try espresso because they're talking about, they're just chatting. And she points out that they should manipulate Chloe and Lucifer to get closer because it will help them get back to heaven. And then we learn that, I mean, we've seen her, she talked to Chloe, she showed up at the interrogations to talk to her, even though she never slept with Lucifer. Um, then Amenadiel talks to Lucifer and mentions um, Chloe, but like, Lucifer has to leave because he's like, no, we're going on a sting operation, so there's not a lot of time to talk. So they leave. Um, Maze is going undercover as a flight attendant to get this bad guy named Bert, who apparently has this package that is worth killing for. Um, so she's undercover, she talks to Dan, while she's talking to Dan he has a wire on so he can communicate with, I guess it's still called a wire, so he can communicate with Chloe and Lucifer who are in the van. Um, during their conversation, Maze reveals to everyone that Dan slept with Mom Morningstar, which is super super awkward, and then Chloe's upset and Lucifer's upset, so Lucifer gets out of the van, Chloe's in the van, then a guy shows up and says he's Bert, which, and so Maze takes him up to a hotel room, which is what she's supposed to do, then she roughs him up a ton, and then he's like, no, I'm not Bert, I'm just a guy! This dude paid me a C note! And then they get up there and she's like, can I keep him? Because he's totally not Bert. Turns out, Bert is actually behind Lucifer, and it's a guy from the party that they were at, and he's holding a gun on him and he wants the package, because he's like, you have to have it. Jana was only there for like a minute, she must have just dropped it, and he's like, I don't have it. But he takes the gun away, and it actually gets very introspective, because he's like, you weren't good enough for Gianna, you, like, nobody is kind of, like, I wasn't, you weren't, and it turns into a lot of, like, Chloe is not good enough for me, like, not good enough for me, I'm not good enough for Chloe, that's what it turns into, that was poor phrasing the first time. Um, he takes the gun, does some mojo on Bert, and Bert is instantly, like, freaking out, and you're like, okay, they got the guy, but there's no package, like, what are you talking about? Turns out, the guy at the pool party they talked to that was sending the creepy texts, um, has the package, but now he's like twitchy and weird. And it's um, Jamie Kennedy, yeah, Jamie Kennedy, who was Randy in the Scream movies. He was also in Ghost Whisperer, but he like looks twitchy and weird. And there's a guy in a hat. Like you can't see his face, but he's in a hat. And Randy's like, I don't know, I got this. She said I'd get it, like there was a ton of money involved, so I, I had to get rid of her. And or I don't, he like took it. I guess he didn't get rid of her. The one guy actually killed her. Um, he didn't, but he has the package. And he like twitching, he's like, so one of them broke and it spilled on me, what is this stuff? And he like looks like he's dying and they don't explain what it is. Like it was labeled, but I couldn't read the label. So if someone did and wants to tell me what the label said, that would be great. Um, but then he like gets whacked, like hit, whacked. He's also dead, but by the dude in the hat, I still don't know exactly like what was in the pack. I'm guessing a bio weapon, but I don't know. Like my immediate thought was horseman of the apocalypse. Is it disease or pestilence or whatever? I don't know, that would be cool. Um, but that 
is the thing that's happening next week, so we'll actually like meet the big bad next week. Um, is what I think is happening. Maybe not. I know there's a neurosurgeon. There is a neurosurgeon character, and I don't know if the man in the hat is the neurosurgeon, and that's what's happening. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Things are a little crazy, and I'm very excited to see what happens next week. But I was very excited about the Lucifer reveal. That was fun. Um, and just very exciting. And then, I don't know, it's so crazy that it's a three episode arc, so like this is a recap, but it's a recap of just this little part that's leading into the rest of it. So let me know what your favorite parts were, let me know what you enjoyed, let me know what you're hoping happens in the next two episodes. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of me, please subscribe. You can find me on Twitter, at clefnotes, on my blog, clefnotes.wordpress.com. I write for the Nerdy Girl Express, the nerdygirlexpress.com, or in their Snapchat, the Nerdy Girl EXP, and I post recipes on the iZombiesport group site, iZombiesportGroup.com. Bye, internet people.